Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. As you probably saw in the first video, or I would highly recommend checking out, I've set up this SSH compatible server running Ubuntu Server 16.04 on this inside this wooden box. If you want to see the inside of the box, you can head back to the previous part of the video and see that. So now I'm going to show you how to connect to it. So I have PuTTY open here, and the server is called Atomic. I double click on that, it's going to pull up and ask me for a login. And, of course, then I'll type in my user credentials and log on to the machine. Now, because this is an SSH server, I don't actually connect to it with a monitor. I just run it standalone with an Ethernet cable and power. So that's basically my login method. So on this video, I'm going to be showing you basically how I have the server configured and what uh, configuration steps I used to enable SSH, FTP, uh, Samba, Samba print servers for Windows machines, uh, as well as a few other features, including an email service for system status updates. So I'm going to switch to a screen capture of PuTTY, and I will show you some of those features. So now I'm ready to log on to the Atomic file server in a box through PuTTY. So I'll put in my credentials. And thankfully, Ubuntu obfuscates passwords automatically. So now that I've logged on, you can see we're running Ubuntu 16.04 and it gives some general information about the server and gives me a command prompt. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the uh, list of mounted volumes and there are two in particular that we're going to pay attention to. The two we want to look at here are dev sdc2 and dev sda1. These are our two hard drive partitions corresponding to the two one terabyte disks. These are respectively located in the folders slash media slash drive one and slash media slash drive two. This will become important later on when I specify information for my uh, FTP and Samba servers. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how I've configured SSH. Now if you don't know, SSH is the uh, protocol used for the remote terminal access. That's what we're using right now to access the server. And I've configured it in kind of a unique way so that I can access it from over the internet without doing too much, uh, without having constant battering of logon attempts on the default port. So I'm going to show you that by going nano uh, slash etc slash ssh slash sshd config. And here we are in the configuration file for ssh. Now the first thing I want to note is uh, that the port number, which is by default 22, uh, I've changed to 55,000. Now this is arbitrary and it's a port that is not in use by any other program on the server. And I've chosen this port because when I set up uh, SSH on the, on the global uh, internet, on the wide area network under 22, I was getting constant logon attempts, which isn't really a problem because my password is strong and I, don't, uh, I only have one account whitelisted for logon. However, it was uh, kind of annoying because it was using up multiple megabytes of log file and I got the feeling that if I let it go on too long, it would just slow everything down. So when I switched to the uh, non-standard port, that of course went away. I haven't had a single attempt on this port uh, in the two weeks or so I've had it running. Now the, night, the last thing I'll show you, the rest of this is pretty much stock for the SSH configuration. But the second thing is uh, I set a whitelist. So I use the allow users command for only my own account to log on through SSH. This is because I have several different FTP account uh, account user accounts set up as well as a few other just miscellaneous administrative accounts with varying strengths of password and I want to make sure that only accounts with or the only the kind of main administration account that I'm using is able to access the machine that way somebody else doesn't accidentally log on through SSH and dig around where they're not supposed to so the next thing I'm going to show you is my Samba configuration so I'll control X to get out of here now to show you Samba, I'm going to show you the uh, configuration files. So I'm going to do another nano, but this time instead of going into SSH, I'm going to go into Samba forward slash smb.conf, which is the Samba configuration file. Now for those who don't know, Samba is a program that allows Windows computers using uh, the SMB protocol to access files and shared drives on a Linux machine. Samba is basically the same protocol as a Windows file sharing system, and it makes porting between the two operating systems very easy. So the first thing I did here is I set a guest account. This is a Samba user account that's just 
basically a holdover or a, uh, a space filler account to force as a guest user uh, in later uh, parts of this configuration. Most of this has been kept fairly stock from the uh, Ubuntu manufacturer and the I'll get now on to the specific things that I've changed. Now the first thing that I've configured is I've set this up as a print server. I have it set for all printers and I've previously set up CUPS which is the uh, Unix print scheduler uh, designed by Apple actually and CUPS is configured so that my uh, USB connected printer is one of the listed printers on this machine. As a result, any Windows computer connecting to this machine via SMB or through Samba is going to see that printer and be able to connect to it. Now there is a folder option for printer drivers. I haven't populated that because the Windows computers I use all have the driver automatically installed for my brother laser printer, so I don't need to have any specialty drivers. I could of course populate this directory with specialty drivers for other operating systems if necessary, however. Here's where the really important Samba configuration comes in down here. This is under the drive configuration. Now you'll see why this is uh, important in the future when I show you my FTP configuration, but I have an individual user account for every uh, drive partition that I have shared on Samba. I have uh, drive zero, this is my 32 gigabyte SD card drive, shared as a forced user on uh, called FTP drive zero. Drive one, I have FTP drive one, and at drive two, I respectively have FTP drive two. Both of these are guest only, which means that by default, it sets to the guest account, but it uses this force user to set the permissions. That way, the permissions to any file written or read from the uh, individual drive is assigned, and the ownership is assigned to that user, respectively. Now, as you can see, the locations of these drives, I've set a drive zero directory in Samba user's home directory on the SD card. I've set a, uh, drive, a folder in drive one, the mount in media, and a folder in drive two, the mount for the drive two. So all th both of these two are one terabyte drives, and the top one is on the SD card. So I'll exit out of here. And the next thing I'll show you is my FTP configuration. So I'm using VSFTP, this is, uh, a, this is, it's called Very Secure FTP. At the moment I'm not using SSL, but I may configure that in the future. So I'm going to go nano, well, I'm going to tab up to that, go nano etc slash VSFTPD, that stands for VSFTP and then daemon dot conf. And now we have the configuration file for the VSFTP daemon. So I have, uh, I've disabled anonymous logins. This is a security feature to make sure that uh, anonymous users don't get into a directory. Even if they didn't have any permissions that could still potentially leave certain things vulnerable if they found their way into higher directories. What I have set up is I've set up the local, uh, local enable here, which means that I'm allowing users uh, from the network to log onto this machine. And I've also enabled writing so that authorized users can write out to their file systems. Now the next thing I'll show you as well is uh, a few lines down here and it is, if I can find it here, chroot local user equals yes. Now in Unix based systems, chrooting means that you're restricting the user to their own home directory. Now what this means is each individual user will be assigned uh, only access to their own home directory and won't be able to access any other part of the server. This has been, I've configured this to basically uh, set users in a walled garden where they can't access anything outside of their re, uh, respective directory. Now on FTP, any user on the server can theoretically make an attempted logon. So this is one of the reasons why I've configured, uh, I've configured it such that it is, uh, these users are ch rooted to their own respective directories. So it's, there is a ch root list, I'm not using that at the moment. Uh, but what I'm going to show you next is the user directory file so that I can show you how I've actually given each user a walled garden access to only the, only the actual FT, uh, Samba folder, rather, such that anyone on FTP can write out to their respective subdirectory within Samba without adversely affecting any other part of the server. So I'll exit out of this file, and now I'm going to go into nano slash etc slash password. Now this doesn't actually show any passwords. This is just the list of users file. 
And I'll draw your attention to these three uh, users here, FTP drive one, two, and zero, which are the ones that I showed you earlier in the Samba configuration. Now, as you can see, I have set each one's respective home directory to a subdirectory called FTP dir within drive one, drive two, and drive zero respectively. Now, what this does is it makes it so that if you log on via FTP, you're automatically walled in to this FTP dir within these drives. However, you, since you're, being, uh, you're operating on the drives as an owner of the files called FTP drive one, two, or zero respectively, any file that you write onto here using that account will automatically also be owned by the file, uh, by the user who's logging on to that uh, partition using Samba. What this means is anyone using Samba can also access within this subdirectory and modify any file here. But since, I, since FTP is open to the internet and Samba is not, I've made sure that uh, users accessing the server via FTP cannot backtrack into the parent directory and see the other files in drive one. This is a bit of compartmentalization to make sure that anyone on Samba can access anything that FTP has put up, but FTP cannot necessarily access everything that Samba has put up. Just a general security feature. And again, by ch rooting the users to these folders, I've made sure that they don't have access to any other part of the, uh, of the file server besides this folder. So we'll exit out of this file. And the next thing I'll show you is uh, a cl relatively clever setup for monitoring this server. Now I'm using a, a service called uh, SSMTP. This is the this is actually a mail service that I've configured using uh, to use Gmail uh, to basically send me an email once an hour, uh, describing or showing my most important log files and their changes, as well as system status, temperature, uh, memory usage, etc. So I've set this up in a cron job using SSMTP. So first I'll show you my SSMTP uh, file uh, configuration file. So this one's gonna require sudo because it's in a protected directory. And I'm gonna go nano slash etc slash SSMTP slash SSMTP.conf. And of course, since it's sudo, I have to put in my password. Now, I've obfuscated the password to my uh, Gmail account that I've set up. This is a secondary Gmail account that's just for this file server. It's uh, ending in server. And what it's going to be doing is it's going to be sending out uh, emails from my server to my own personal email account. Now, I've set this to use TLS. I'm connecting to smtp.gmail.com on port 587 and using, of course, these credentials to access it. Uh, I'm using the host name of this machine, Atomic, as my host name, and the mail is going to show up as coming from gmail.com since it's being sent from this uh, Gmail account. And I've made sure on Gmail that uh, it's all set up for receiving TLS SMTP access on that port. So now that I have that set up, I'll show you the script that I've written to actually send out my emails. So I'm gonna change directory to slash etc slash cron.hourly and this is a, an hourly cron job directory in which any uh, executable files within are executed every hour. So if I do an ls-l, we can see there are two executable files, email logs and email stack. Now, the reason these, aren't, uh, these don't have extensions of .sh is because uh, the program that executes these hourly doesn't accept any file with an extension after it. It only accepts files that are a single line, it has some specific requirements. So uh, I don't have extensions, but I have marked these, as you can see here, as executable uh, with global executable permissions. Now anything in cron.hourly is executed as root, so it should have the highest level permissions and should override any permission problems in this folder. So first I'll show you how email logs works. So I'll go sudo nano email logs. And basically I've written a script to echo a bunch of text lines into a file and then uh, send that file via SSMTP. So you see I'm uh, echoing the to email address. This is my email here. The from, which is showing that it's coming from the server email address. The subject, since this is the log file status, it's atomic server logs. And then I'm uh, effectively importing, well, I'm putting a couple spaces in, putting some more messaging in, and importing two log files. 
So I'm importing the VSFTPD log file. This is to show if anyone's attempting or has successfully logged on to FTP. You can find that in uh, var log vsftpd.log. And I'm basically piping or uh, air double arrowing that into this text file. I'm also sending in the SSH log to see if anyone's attempting to log on to SSH. Uh, and it will, of course, say if I have logged on as well. Uh, and interestingly, I periodically do get hits on FTP, but uh, not very many. It's really not a big problem. But the SSH, as I mentioned earlier, I had to change the port because when I first set this up, the log file was literally like 50 megabytes within a few hours of running, and the emails were getting very unwieldy as a result. So I had to change the port on that. Then it just executes the SSMTP command, sends it to my personal email uh, with this text file, and terminates. Here I've mapped my network locations uh, on Atomic as drive 0, drive 1, and drive 2. This allows me to basically access these on the fly from the machine as if they were Windows, regular Windows drives on the system. And since each one has the correct permissions for FTP, when I transfer files onto them, there are no ownership or permission problems when accessing these files either from uh, Samba or from FTP. So now I've opened up FileZilla, which is an FTP client for uh, Windows or other operating system machines. So for example, I'll show you FTP connecting to drive one. So it's gonna resolve, it's gonna to connect to it, well, and now it's connected successfully. So on drive one in the FTP folder, you see I have some files here and uh, a music library here as well. So uh, as a result, I can access these files. Uh, however, if I go to the top end directory, I cannot access anything above that. Uh, in fact, even if I try to, even let's say I try to go to slash home up here or something, it's going to say fail to retrieve directory listing, basically assuring an airtight system where I'm walled into only what's within this folder. The last thing I'll show you today is my Gmail access, uh, my Gmail access to the server logs. So this is in my main Gmail account and server updates, I made a folder for these. And as you can see, uh, firing off once an hour for the last week or two has uh, really put a lot, of, uh, a lot of emails into the box, so I'll probably have to delete some in the future. But you can see that uh, I have server logs and server status showing up at 4.17 p.m. right on the dot every time. Now this is an arbitrary value that Ubuntu had selected already as the uh, random time interval at which to execute cron.hourly. So it's not something I configured, but it's close enough. So as you can see, I have uh, some attempted connections on FTP here, but uh, nothing too extreme. And you can see these are my most recent connections on the local machine accessing from, uh, from my local server, uh, from my local machine. You can also see that uh, it, this is my booting up server listening command. So it's listening on all IP addresses on port 55,000 for SSH and uh, pretty much the same thing is uh, recorded in the rest of these. It automatically truncates all the previously viewed data, which is a nice feature of Gmail, uh, which narrows it down just to the new stuff, which is nice because then I don't have to like look through all this content just to see my own uh, updates. You can see if I show all of this data here, I have my WAN IP address. now don't go and try to log on to my server from this because I have already changed my router address by the time this video has gone up. But you can see information about the CPU. It's a first generation Atom Z520. I'm clocking it at 1.3 gigahertz. I'm running about 47 degrees Celsius on CPU and not too much memory. It's only used 87 megs out of the two gigabytes installed. It also shows my drive usage. I've got 3% used on my main uh, drive one, or on my one terabyte drive one, 54% used on drive two, and uh, I'm not sure why it's not showing drive zero, but, uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, the 28 gig, 10% is used of that drive. So basically that's the information that I get emailed uh, once an hour. The most useful thing by far is this WAN IP address. That way if my router gets reset or my modem gets reset, uh, I can still access the server remotely without uh, needing to go home and find this address again. So that's my server setup. I'm still kind of new at sysadmining, so I'm kind of getting 
uh, kind of getting dropped into the deep end of running Ubuntu server in command line uh, mode, but it's been pretty useful and it's doing everything I needed to so far. So hopefully this wasn't excessively boring since it was mostly command line. I hope you learned something about system administration, and if you have any suggestions for what I should do with this server, or any ways I might be able to improve it, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching Dielectric videos, and I will see you next time.